competition from the 1930s to 2003. The reason why I picked Rosemary Brown is because she was the first black woman to become a politician. Hill, Senator Oliver was the first black person to sit in the Senate. He was Senate, Senate until 2013. He was a major part in showing the world that black people could do the same, if not better than white people. I chose Dr. Abbott because he was rebellious against racism. He realized different treatment because of his skin color was not right. So he stood up against it. I chose Chadwick Boseman as a person of interest from the Black community because he was a very talented actor who played various characters in a variety of films, but he also used his skills to do great things for the community. He knew that discrimination still existed today, and he was determined to do something about it. He protested for civil rights during the 1960s, advocated for social justice and racial interrogation. He took on roles that gave more recognition to the Black community. He was the first black lead in Marvel Universe in which he played Black Panther. There were always white heroes, but never black heroes. And his legacy as the Black Panther gave young black children in communities all over the world a hero who looked like them. He's a prime example of black excellence. leader in the broader labor community as a longtime delegate to an executive member of the district labor council, advocates for all workers. Pam co-chairs the Ontario Health Coalition during her to improve public health care. Pam loves playing with baseball on Sunday night and Nineteen forty five. Through constant daily effort and support, the Allied forces brought an end to the Second World War. Have you ever wondered how this world would look if the Allies never showed up? But they did. Every day. Because that's what Allies do. They show up. Every day until victory is proclaimed. As I stand on the front lines fighting for my humanity, I wonder how I can have so many allies and still be so alone. How so many claim to have my back and I feel like I'm on my own. And then I realize that many don't understand the power and privilege they exercise when they call themselves an ally. Giving themselves titles that their actions haven't earned, hoping to trick us into believing that they're on our side of the fight. But through your actions, I'll decide if you're an ally of mine. So let me be clear, we don't name anything around here. I'm not interested in reposts, retweets, and likes. Do you ever look at the price before paying lip service? Your hashtags won't save my life. It's time to put some skin in the game. I don't want you to stand beside me. I need you to stand in front of me. I need you on the front lines. I need you to decide if you are okay with my oppression or willing to fight against your own power and privilege because we are done validating passports for cultural tourists, exploring our experiences with no checkpoints. We season your lives and are left with no one by our sides. We feet are being peppered by reality and bullets. I wonder what it's like. 
to be able to choose when you're willing to take a risk and how much you're willing to sacrifice when my existence is at risk every day of my life. Part of the power that comes with privilege is the ability to name things, shape the narrative, find scapegoats, and position yourself in the most advantageous positions like ally. My oppression is happening every day. Dear ally, what have you done for me today? Have you picked up the phone and checked on your black friends? Have you felt buried under the weight of their hopelessness? Has their anguish inspired any part of you to actually do something? And I don't mean hit in the streets to burn and loot, knowing that we'll be blamed for all of that too. What parts of your power will you denounce? What parts of your privilege will you build trenches to fight against? That burden and exhaustion that you temporarily feel is the weight of the existence we've been born into and we don't have the luxury to cast it aside, pick and choose when we want to carry it. What if instead of your coat, you were forced to check your privilege at the door when you feel oppressed, like we were stripping you of something that should be yours, something that we have never experienced for no other reason than the color of our skin understand? That when a society is shaped by systemic racism, you only need to exist to benefit or be oppressed by it. So now is the time. Battle lines have already been drawn in our blood and we are tired from fighting a war that isn't even ours to fight. We are on the front lines fighting your war. How do you sleep at night when we can't take it anymore? So what will you do with the power and privilege that you have in this life? so that I can recognize your efforts and crown you as an ally. So we also had a, a great amount of student work submitted artistically. I'd like to share three pieces and then we're gonna have a, a poem recited by one of our students. This was um, actually submitted by a staff member. This was um, a great artistic piece that was submitted. <laughs> and, and this was actually part of Ms. Lamore's, uh, Ms. Demore's class who, who did uh, a amazing amount of, of work um, during Black History Month. Anyways, now I'd like to turn this over to um, our special guest star student here, Neef Prince, who's going to um, share a poem with you. Hello, good morning. We think that being behind a screen is easier to do, but it's still pretty nerve wracking. So bear with me. Now this poem that I wrote is called Black is Beautiful. And I know some of you guys are probably itching to be on your phone. Some of you guys probably are, but if you just give me a couple of minutes, hear me out. It goes a little something like this. For generations, Black has been made synonymous with all that is bad, all that is wrong. But contrary to belief, black is beautiful. Doctors, lawyers, leaders, inventors, artists, we have them all. 
So how could something so brilliant and grand be made so insignificant and small? You could sit there and search for an answer, but I guarantee you won't find much. Because why must one that is human fight so hard to be treated as such? Yes, we are a faulted people, but is there a single person who can say they're not? Exactly. But even still, for years, we have been abused, killed, and stripped of our humanity. We have been belittled, discredited, and on the receiving end of inhumane brutality. We have been made to think that our skin tone is not a gift, but instead a mistake. We've had limits sent our direction to allow us to only ever be good, but to never be great. We have been treated and used as though we were animals on display. But enough is enough. And that's why today I'm here to say to all the little boys and girls, teens, adults, and the elderly as well, Black is beautiful. You may not look like everyone else, but you're still a work of art, a beautiful piece of abstract. So when you stare into the mirror, I want you to observe all that you have and none of what you lack. Smile when you see your melanin, I tell you. Rejoice in the fact. Because despite what the world may say or what your insecurities may allow you to believe, there is beauty in being Black. All right, thank you, Manif. That was great. So that just about sums up our presentation. We just have a nice thank you from Miss Neblet that she put together. So I got to share my screen again. This concludes our Black History Month celebration at Gaysville. We are grateful to everyone who took the time to celebrate with us, everyone who took the time to participate and incorporate Black history and Black experiences into classes. We hope that you've learned a bit more about Black excellence, Black commitment, Black joy. Even though March is upon us, this doesn't mark the end of our journey. Black history goes beyond the month of February. So we are encouraging you to continue to learn and unlearn, be inspired by those who represent the Black diaspora, those who continue to thrive and strive for greatness, even in the toughest of circumstances. To those students who identify as Black, I would say Black is beautiful. Black is resilient. And I hope that you continue to push and be seen and represented inside and outside of our school. Thank you, JCR. We continue to be the perfect storm. All right, so that concludes our presentation. What I'd like to encourage everybody to do as we think back to Black History Month and what Black history means to us is to switch your perspective and try to look at things in a different way. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Happy Friday. Great to have you all a part of the presentation. Thank you.